Hey, welcome back to the channel. So the next game in our little romp through the GTA series is Grand Theft Auto 2, a game that I've actually never played before, and to be honest, I don't really know what the general consensus of this game actually is. While most really consider the start of Grand Theft Auto as we know it to be GTA 3, and the first GTA occasionally gets mentioned from time to time on the virtue of it being the first entry, Grand Theft Auto 2 is a game that I almost never hear get discussed. This was kind of a surprise to me, because while I was pretty tough on the first GTA in my last video, I still thought that there was something to that formula, and there were some aspects that I truly did enjoy. So I was a little interested in finding out why most of the discussion seems to either focus exclusively on the first GTA game, or why they lump these two in together when talking about the earlier parts of this franchise. Like, sure, I understand often grouping up these two or overlooking the second game since they are both very similar, and since the first game did sell a little bit better, and also the second game was essentially released on all the same platforms shortly after the first game came out, with an added Dreamcast port as a bonus. However, after playing GTA 2, I want to throw my hat in the ring and sing some praises for this game, since it honestly kind of deserves it. It's no secret that I wasn't the biggest fan of the first GTA, mainly due to a lot of issues that I had with how the game held up in a modern context, and make no mistake about it, GTA 2 is definitely not perfect by any means. But, this game did address a number of my major concerns, it added some new systems to the formula that I really appreciate, in some ways, I actually think can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the 3D entries in the series. I think this game is actually a bit underrated, I'm hoping that after this video, you might be a little bit more inclined to track this game down and give it a shot, because it's actually pretty damn good. Definitely worth a purchase in my opinion, even if it isn't the easiest thing in the world to acquire, since Rockstar delisted it from all storefronts, but I digress. With that all being said, we have a lot to talk about today, so without further ado, this is my review of Grand Theft Auto 2. If you remember in my last video, link up at the top, wink wink, I was a little bit mixed when it came to GTA 1's presentation. I thought the music was pretty good, but the visuals were ugly, and I thought there were some really good details in the audio, but the game ran like absolute shit. Well, you might be pretty happy to hear that GTA 2 is pretty much a step up in most regards to what we saw with GTA 1. Let's get the worst thing about this game's presentation out of the way. So, unlike GTA 1, I'm not really aware of any big community fixes to the stability of GTA 2. I do know of some ways to enable widescreen support, which looking back, maybe I should have looked into because of how fucky this game is with its aspect ratio settings, but I decided to go into this game with the official Steam release with no modifications. That was a mistake. Okay, it's not that bad. It's still a little shitty though. Let's see here. So thankfully I didn't have any issues with my frame rate like I did with the first GTA, but the trade-off with that was is my game crashed. A lot. Like upwards of 20 times if I'm being honest, which is pretty damn bad. I also mentioned how weird the aspect ratio settings were. It took me a while to find the right configuration that didn't cut off like 20% of my screen or so. And the annoying thing about this is, is you have to relaunch the game every single time that you apply these settings, which can be a little bit annoying. Not to mention, there were pretty numerous bugs that I experienced. I got stuck under the ground a few times. Whenever I tabbed out of the game, I was only able to control the camera and not my character. I reloaded a few times only to have one of my faction's respect levels be completely drained to the bottom even though they were fine with the previous save. And there was also plenty of times that I would get stuck in weird positions, typically when I was going through different forms of elevation. There wasn't anything too awful that a quick reload couldn't fix, but they were still annoying nevertheless. Pushing in the direction of more solid improvements, let's talk about that audio. I think for the most part, everything here is an upgrade. The thing that I think might be slightly worse than GTA 1 is probably the soundtrack, though. Now make no mistake about it, this OST is not bad by any means. In fact, I think it's even more varied than GTA 1's for the wider array of genres. This time around, we've got your hip-hop, we've got your pop, we've got your jazz, we've got some rock, we've got some hardcore punk, and we have a ton of EDM with a bunch of drum and bass, house, acid breaks, techno. Long story short, there are a lot of genres of music in this, and from what I can tell, looks like they're all original compositions played for laughs, much like the first game. That being said, while I do appreciate this variety, I think the tracks from GTA 1 stand out a little bit more. There are probably a couple reasons for that. Maybe the songs in GTA 1 are just a little bit more catchy. Maybe it's because there was a bit more of a limited selection with the first game, so we heard those songs more often. 
but I think one of the main contributing factors was because you hear the music in GTA 2 far less than the first game because of the other thing that was added, the radio infomercials. <laughs> Good god, these are actually pretty damn funny. You've got the condom ads, the commercials where they make the idea of buying a truck sound like you're having sex, the rant where the guy is questioning why we need police officers, and... Alright, that last one's a bit on the annoying side too, but honestly, these are pretty fun and they really do add a lot to the character of this game. The audio in general has seen some pretty stark improvements if I'm being honest. Sound effects sound significantly better, you have civilians on the street yelling an assortment of things at you, and most importantly, they gave the fart and the burp button a variety of different sounds. That doesn't prove to you that this is a better game than I don't think anything will. Seriously, the audio has a lot more attention to detail in it. Like, I love how this game actually has different footstep sound depending on where you're walking, or how certain radio stations will become staticky or hard to hear if you move outside of their signal. Those are both really great touches. What isn't exactly a great touch is the ear-piercing sound effect of whenever you take too sharp of a turn and your wheels start to skid. God, this happens so much and it's just ear grating. One final plus on the audio though, I do love the over-the-top announcer. He seems so cheery in everything he is saying, especially when picking up weapons. Pistol, machine gun, Molotov cocktail. AK-47, tactical nuke, Boeing AH-64 Apache attack helicopter. And finally, we have probably the most universally obvious upgrade, the visuals. This game looks so much better than GTA 1. Now there is still the issue of the super limited animations on people and the absolute atrocity of a job to the characters' faces. I mean, just look at this guy, Jesus Christ, he looks like Sloth from the Goonies. And also, what's up with the live action shots from the people in the menus? This guy is like, are you sure you're done playing GTA 2, bitch? You still got five bonus missions to finish. Nah, I'm good. Everything else, though, is a massive upgrade. The color palette is much more varied with different sections of the city having distinct design tropes and structures that make them much more identifiable, which means less chance of getting lost. Love to see it. The particle effects are also a lot more vibrant, especially when it comes to the blood and the explosions. And speaking of explosions, there is actually some visual feedback on your car now when it's taking heavy damage, with a small fire coming out, making it a bit easier to avoid deaths inside of a vehicle. Well, in theory, that is. Look, I'm not going to sit here and say that this game looks great by any means, as I do think it does leave a little bit to be desired when compared with other games of the time, such as Medal of Honor, Resident Evil 3, or Final Fantasy VIII, but like I said, it's at least a step up, and as far as it goes when compared to other games of the time, I think it's overall passable. So GTA 1 had the privilege of having the three most iconic locations that everyone knows about, being Liberty City, Vice City, and San Andreas. How does GTA 2 follow this up? By having the setting that absolutely no one knows exists outside of those who have already played GTA 2. And with a name like Anywhere City, can you really blame people for not being familiar with this one? Yeah, they actually named the city in this game fucking anywhere. That's like naming a location Whatever'sville or you come up with the name Berg. It's almost like a name for a town in a D&D &D campaign that your DM had no idea what to name it, so they just pulled something out of their ass. Look, I get it. They want this to be not specific so the players can come up with their own interpretation of where this might be or some shit, but part of the reason that people love Liberty City, San Andreas, and Vice City is because those are real-world locations that everybody's already familiar with, but they have their own sense of identity to them. Anywhere could be... well, anywhere. Because it doesn't have any of the standout features that make all those other settings so memorable. By the sounds of things, you might think I'm about ready to shit all over the open world in this game, but aside from its lack of identity, I actually think the open world in this game is a massive step up from GTA 1. A lot of the early 3D GTA games have this sort of three-act structure taking place across different areas of the city which open up as you progress. And I guess you could say that was Pioneer with GTA 1, but with that being three different cities, I really want to give the credit to GTA 2 here. You start in the downtown areas of anywhere, before opening up the residential and then the industrial districts. 
And while Anywhere might not stand out from the other recognizable GTA locations, at least the three different districts have their own feel to them when compared to one another. The downtown district has the tightly packed buildings you might expect, while the residential has a melting pot of different neighborhoods, and the industrial district has many warehouses, docks, and scaffoldings to explore. Each of these also have a ton of different points of interest, such as police stations, hospitals, army bases, university campuses, there's a lot more variety here. But as different as these areas might look from one another, there are plenty of things that are kept familiar throughout. One thing that you might remember from GTA 1 are the trains, and they make their return here, which I admittedly didn't use too often since I just found driving to my destination to be the quicker option. But hey, they're still here. Thankfully, driving in the open world feels much easier now too, because these levels feel far less segmented. There are still areas you need to go in a particular direction to get to, primarily being the higher tier missions and the secret areas, but for the most part, everything you need to do is in an easily accessible area. Dotted around the map, you can also find numerous weapons, power-ups, stunt jumps, secrets, and collectible GTA 2 logos? These essentially unlock some bonus levels for you to play. No real reason to explore these outside of curiosity, but they're somewhat enjoyable. Now the most interesting feature that these districts have is that each of these maps are essentially divided into four areas. You have the neutral zone in the middle, and then each district also has three gangs that occupy different territories in that area. These areas are visually distinct from one another, in not just the way that they look, but also by the NPCs, radio stations, and vehicles in them, which do a much better job of giving information to the player's whereabouts than just the landmarks and the neighborhood names of GTA 1. Added onto that, you also have the benefit of having multiple compasses active at the same time that can show you where not only other gangs are, but where the different tiers of missions are when you are in a particular area. Each of these areas even have their own multi-purpose garages, allowing you to get ammo, explosives, and paint your car to hide from the cops all in a one-stop shop. Guess how many times it took for me to get the reading for that part of the script right? All of these things together really make exploring anywhere much easier and more enjoyable than my time with the first Grand Theft Auto game. Although, you know what would be a little bit better? A fucking map and a compass that was actually helpful. Yep, still no map system and the compass again isn't context sensitive so it doesn't account for obstacles in your way, which still sucks. And again, no map in the manual, a simple solution that I'm surprised still didn't exist by this point. Thankfully, there are a lot of things in the game that do alleviate this pain, but you just have to wonder why not add what is probably the most obvious and best working solution after it didn't exist in the first game. Oh well, just pull up a second window with a map on standby and play this game in a way that makes it way more enjoyable. The biggest issue I had with GTA 1 ultimately came down to the gameplay. Now let's get my prime complaint with the first game out of the way, the way that Grand Theft Auto used the top-down perspective. I will say I was wrong with my initial thoughts, and that GTA can most definitely work from this viewpoint. It is by no means perfect, and in a lot of areas it still is kind of rough, but for the most part, I think it works pretty well here. So starting with the things that they fixed, let's talk about the camera first. I'd imagine that there is some level of my eyes adjusting to the changing camera on my end, but I will say it does seem like there was an improvement with how the camera dynamically moves between speeds. No longer does the player get their own form of whiplash when they get into an accident, as the camera adjusts at a much slower rate. Combining that with the smoother looking visuals, and hey, no headaches for me this time around, and I was able to react to stuff more accordingly, which that factors into much better driving. So now it feels like vehicles have a lot more weight to them, helping them not only have a better individual identity, but also also gives more feedback for the player to control them more efficiently. And since you have this greater level of control, that means you'll be colliding into things far less often, which is boosted by the fact that there is a less unnecessary shit to run into. The random street lights, poles, and bits of debris that would stop you in the middle of a high-speed chase? Gone. Now you just drive right through them. There are of course still obstacles that can prevent you from driving anywhere you want, but they aren't in the high traffic areas where these pursuits are typically happening. Oh, and the collision detection on the cars is so much better. You can reliably bob and weave around vehicles with the only times you crash into them being by a misjudgment or a misinput. This feels so much better to do, and it's one of the most obvious improvements after playing these games back to back. Even that doesn't compare to the work that they did on the hit detection during gunfights though. Your bullets actually hit people. I repeat, your bullets are actually hitting people. Boys, we are eating good tonight. 
look, you're still stuck using tank controls for a multi-directional shooter, so this even isn't even close to an ideal control scheme, but god damn if they didn't try to make this work for GTA 2. This time around, it looks like you have this light aim assist when shooting that snaps you to the closest target when you're attempting to fire. Thank you, what a world of difference that makes. Combat is actually fun in this game now, especially when you combine it with all the new weapons available, such as the shotgun, Molotov cocktails, and Tesla gun. It gets even better though. This time around, you actually have a health bar. Like, that's huge. No more getting one shot, thank fucking god. You can still die rather quickly from melee or a lot of gunfire, but combine this with the body armor power up, and shit, you actually have a chance to take on larger groups of enemies in combat. Which is good because there are typically a lot more NPCs and vehicles on screen at any given point now, and their AI has also been improved. Now, cars will attempt to drive around traffic blocks after a certain period of time. Now, there are certain NPCs that will attempt to hijack other cars, fight each other, or even try to rob you, which is actually pretty funny. Because of this, crime is not only far easier to do, but far more likely to happen, which means more run-ins with the police. The cops definitely had one of the biggest overhauls in GTA 2. These guys go from being a bit more relaxed than how they were in GTA 1, with just trying to arrest you, to destroying the very earth you walk on. They can still arrest you at the touch, which sucks, but it does look like you have a little bit more time to kill them to get out of it, which is kinda nice. Getting arrested absolutely decimates your point multiplier though, so I'd really advise not letting that happen. As your wanted rake increases, police will start using deadly force, they'll set up roadblocks, they'll call in a SWAT team, They'll call in special agents. Hell, they'll even call in the US military if you get that rank high enough, and by that point, good fucking luck trying to escape them. Though while I do appreciate the game giving several different locations to be able to change the paint on your car to outrun the police, simply hiding and waiting for your wanted level to clear is also a valid strategy now too, and on lower wanted ratings, it's actually my preferred way to go about things. It can definitely keep the pace of the game going, it's also kind of fun to lay low while your trail cools down. One of the biggest quality of life additions in this game, and the thing that really helped me keep going after this game still ends up throwing some bullshit at you from time to time, GTA 2 has a save system. Located at the Jesus Saves Churches, get it? You can now save your progress in between missions and reload to that save point whenever you wish. This is a godsend. Shit, now I'm making these jokes too. Because while you still have a live system, at least now having to do frequent restarts isn't the worst thing in the world. And with the way that this game handles its mission structure, you better believe there will be plenty of those frequent restarts. GTA 2 takes a very similar approach to the first game in how it handles its mission progression. Each of the game's three areas will have you attempt to reach a point threshold to move on to the next area. Of course, you can go about getting these points by doing various things such as selling cars, crashing into other vehicles, or murder hoboing your way across the city of anywhere. But you are again heavily encouraged to do the game's main story missions for the multipliers and large point payouts. Now the added wrinkle to this new game comes with the faction respect system. So those three tacky bars up in the corner there actually display the amount of affinity that you have with any of the game's many factions at any given time. Though some of the maps do have overlapping factions. You have everyone from the Japanese mob inspired Yakuza, to the loonies who drive around in cars that even the Riddler's goons would be embarrassed to be seen in, and the rednecks who exist just to remind you that yes, this game is still from the 90s, and yes, it is incredibly dated. Each of these factions occupy their own territory in any given map. They have their own cars, henchmen, radio stations, and most importantly, they react to the player in different ways. If you have a neutral standing, they could give less of a shit about you. However, by doing missions for them or killing off rival gang members, you can actually be included in their ranks, allowing for higher tier missions with larger payouts and also occasional assistance from the NPCs if trouble arises on their turf. Though the opposite is also true, as you help out one gang, you are usually hurting another in some way, causing you to be locked out of those missions, or to be attacked on site with stronger weapons depending on how pissed they are at you. Thankfully, you don't need to complete all the missions in a level, or really all the missions in a given faction in order to move on to the next stage, so the game is incredibly lenient in that regard. This also makes it a lot more replayable, since you might want to align yourself with one faction for the whole level, or maybe just do whatever missions you think are the most fun. 
The choice is really up to you. There are some other great changes that were made to make this game less punishing too, such as if you fail a mission, you can, you know, try it again. Hell, some missions even have checkpoints at certain times, which makes completing those missions much more achievable. So with all those adjustments and quality of life improvements, it kind of sounds like GTA 2 is a much, much easier game than GTA 1, right? Nope, still hard as shit. Man, I hate to kind of wrap up this video with a bit of a sour point, but some of the missions in this game are fucking tough, man. If you thought the train mission in San Andreas was hard, you haven't seen shit. Don't get me wrong, I like most of the missions in this game, but some of them are just way too fucking unforgiving, and they sometimes don't even give out the checkpoints for these missions. A couple examples for you guys. There is one mission where you tasked with stealing a tank from a military base and bringing it to the other side of town. Sounds simple enough, except when you get the tank, you are immediately given a 6-star wanted rating, and the entire military is immediately on your ass with tanks of their own. It takes less than 5 shots from another tank to put you down, and when you occasionally run into a blockade of 3 of them, that makes it very possible that you will need to completely reload. Which sucks because I really like this mission, it's just too damn hard. Oh, another one that really puckered my ass was the one where you need to break into prison. So get this, you have to go to a rival gang area to get into this car where you will immediately be swarmed by the cops and be taken to prison. While you are in the car, it is highly likely the area that you are in will have a very negative respect level, meaning they will be firing at your car while you are incapable of reacting. Assuming that they don't blow you up, you are brought into a prison where you need to find a uniform and kill 8 guards. The only problem is, when you begin doing this, a riot breaks out and the inmates fight anything around them with a pulse, you included. These guys can drain your health incredibly fast, so just expect to go full no Russian on the prison and gun down anyone in sight. The officers you need to kill, by the way, all have automatic weapons, so be prepared to shoot them from range or have body armor on, or else you're probably not killing all eight of these guys. After that, you still need to open the gate and outrun the police all the way to the other side of town without dying. If you do die at this part, there is no checkpoint for this mission, which takes around 15 minutes or so to complete. Suffice to say, I fucked up enough times and decided that my time was better spent on other things the game had to offer. Which, you know, is a bit of a shame. These missions are much more fleshed out than they were in GTA 1, often having multiple different objectives or even acts, and you are actually interacting with real characters during these missions, bringing them much more in line with the modern day titles. These missions have so much more personality, like the one where you need to steal an ice cream truck that you outfit with explosives, or my personal favorite one, the mission for the Russians where you turn a bunch of people you pick up at a bus stop into hot dogs. God, this mission is brutal. You essentially kidnap these people and bring them into a meat packing plant where you and the Russians turn them into hot dogs and deliver those hot dogs to a diner. Jesus, remind me never to get on these guys' bad sides. It's because of how unforgiving these missions can be that I didn't go out of my way to experience all of them in this game. GTA 2 is a much shorter game than GTA 1, but I guarantee you that I have a lot more footage of this game, and at least 60% of that footage is probably me retrying the same missions over and over again. And no matter how much I enjoy the faction system, no matter how much more in-depth these missions are, and no matter how many new characters they come my way, that won't fix the frustrations that I kept having from having to restart after making only one or two simple mistakes. Bit of a dour thing to end this video on, but let me reiterate. I like GTA 2. I think this is a good game. This game is most certainly not perfect, but I'll be damned if this is not a big step up from the first game in nearly every single way. The gameplay and the graphics are just undoubtedly superior, even if they aren't exactly where I'd like them to be, the new faction system is an awesome addition, and something I'd really like to see return to the series at some point. And Anywhere City, while a bit bland, is a structurally very solid environment to explore. Grand Theft Auto 2 surprised me. I never thought this formula could actually be fun with a top-down perspective, but I was proven wrong here. I didn't think that there was any reason to play any GTA game before 3, and again, I was wrong about that too. This is a pretty damn fine game that gets a solid recommendation for me for anyone who is a GTA fan or is a fan of the multi-directional shooter genre. It's definitely got some trappings due to its age, but if you can look past that, I think you will find something really good here and something that is definitely worth your time. That's all the time I got for you guys today. Thank you for watching. What was your favorite memory of Grand Theft Auto 2? Please be sure to leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. And hey, if you enjoyed today's video, maybe consider giving it a like and subscribing. Thank you guys again. I'll catch you in the next video.